Hi there. My name is Dina Kaplan, and I am founder and CEO of The Path, a company in meditation based in New York, but we have community members around the world. And I got into meditation from being a very, very stressed out tech founder. I was so unmindful of my time. I kept myself occupied with meetings and phone calls and joining boards and advisory boards. And I perceived myself as being so busy. I was very, very stressed, but it wasn't a conscious busy. I was just filling my life with things that felt important. And yet I wasn't strategic about my time. Now with mindfulness, my entire life has changed. And so I'm really excited to chat with you about some of the benefits of meditation and why and how meditation can help you live a happier and more fulfilling life. So there are so many benefits of meditation. I could go on for hours about it, but I promise that I won't. Some of the benefits are really physical and very tangible. Meditation literally reduces the production of cortisol, which is also known as the stress hormone in the body. So it literally helps us be and feel less stressed. There's also a huge connection between the mind, or we can even say the brain and the body. The brain through the brain stem is actually connected to the spinal cord. And so when we flood our minds with relaxation and positive affirmations, it actually brings that energy and that positivity into the body. So people, when they meditate, are literally reducing inflammation in the body, which now especially we know is really, really important. And meditation also dramatically increases our immunity, also very important. But some of the other benefits of meditation are about our well-being overall. Meditation over time gives you this feeling of the world not being out to get you, but of the world really supporting you. And so that's a very, a very deep and a very positive benefit. The other thing that meditation can do is give you a strong sense of happiness from within so that you can feel good, you can feel positive, you can feel abundant even independent of anything else going on outside of you, you just feel that from within. But I actually think that the biggest benefit meditation gives any of us is this very big, this almost intangible pause between something that happens to you during the day, any type of stimulation that might be somebody running in front of you as you're rushing onto the subway and then the door is closed and you miss the subway and that person has gotten on and gets to go where they're going and you now maybe are late. Or maybe if you're a driver, someone cuts you off uh, and you almost get into an accident and you feel really stressed. Or it could be even a text message or an email that you get that hits you the wrong way. If you're not a meditator and you haven't started to train your mind, you might have this very instant, very negative response, and maybe you'll lash out back to counter someone else lashing out at you, and then we all know where that can go. When you meditate, over time, you start to have this pause between what's happened to you, and then you get a choice. So rather than just reacting, you can over time learn to respond mindfully to whatever that stimulation is, to whatever's just happened to you. And you might choose if someone's sending something negative to you to just respond negatively, but at least you'll have that choice. And your choice might be, oh, actually this is not right the way someone is handling this. And so I want to respond mindfully and let them know that this isn't right. But with that pause, sometimes you might choose to just let something, let something go. You might choose to shrug your shoulders and just not engage and just smile and move on with your day. Or you might even choose to actually respond with love. I've had this happen. I meditate a lot. Uh, and with that, it helps to bring me some mindfulness, not all of the time, but a lot of the time. And once I was walking in Soho in Manhattan and somebody, boom, brushed up against me, hit me on the shoulder. And so on instinct, I just said, stop. And that person turned around and there was a bystander too. 
And I actually said, are you having a tough day? Because if you are, I just want to know that I want you to know that I see you. And despite what just happened, you know, you brushing up against me, I choose, I choose to send you love. And so I actually said that. I said, I want to send you love and do something kind for you so you don't carry this negative energy with you for the rest of the day. And so they just looked at me stunned and the bystander was stunned. And I said, this was before COVID, so don't worry, I'm safe now. But I said, can I give you a hug? And the person who had hit me was absolutely stunned. Again, this is in the middle of busy Manhattan. They said, yeah. And so I went over and I gave them a hug and the bystander was just flabbergasted. But I actually had tears in my eyes and so did the person that had hit me. And I said, you know, independent of how you acted towards me, we all have good days and we all have bad days and I'm having a good day. So I just want to share some of that positivity with you. And I want you to move on with the rest of your day with a little bit of love for me. And so they said, thank you. And I said, thank you for sharing that moment with me. And the bystander just was standing there stunned. But honestly, I walked away happier. Obviously, so did this person and so did the bystander. And so many times in that pause, we can find love. We can find a, a kindness in us. And so that is part of the beauty and the benefit of meditation is that in that pause, we can find kindness. So with that kindness, we can bring good energy into our own lives and the lives of people around us. So I think for happiness, which is what this festival is about, I, I have some ideas. One is that we can find happiness even now, even in this time of racial injustice, in this time of COVID. We have so much fear. Uh, it's easy to have so much anxiety. There's so much change happening in our society. But I wanted to offer you three tips for happiness. So one of them is that we can create rituals for ourselves, even if you're still quarantining on your own or with a small group of friends or family members, you can create a ritual that is really fun or maybe two or three throughout the week. At the beginning of the quarantine, I was with one friend uh, and I eat really healthy. I eat paleo, so no sugar, no soy, no gluten. I'm pretty strict on it. But every Sunday we decided to make paleo pancakes and then we would play as we were cooking this Commodore song uh, called Easy Like a Sunday Morning. And that was really fun. So my friend, my one friend that I was quarantining with and I would just look forward to that every week. It was a really beautiful thing. So you can create a ritual. I would also say now or anytime is a great time to do something fun, at least once a day. So I get a lot of pleasure out of dancing and I also really like silly pop music. <laughs> so I try to every day full on dance to the Glee version of Call Me Maybe, which some people might say is the worst song of all time, or maybe it's just a great silly fun pop song. But I try to dance to that and do it in the morning. and. It's kind of hard to have a bad day after you've done that. It's fun. It's a little bit silly. Uh, but as I always say, there's no, no prize for suffering. Um, so I recommend that. And then a third tip is to choose to diffuse. Or another way to say that is to choose love. So I spoke about this a bit earlier. But people are stressed, whether it's this time or any time. So the way the human brain is wired, we tend to focus on the negative rather than the positive. And it's impossible to not encounter people who are stressed and who might act badly. So sometimes, as I was saying earlier, you need to counter that and stick up for yourself. But there are many, many times when small things happen, uh, especially with strangers, that instead of getting all worked up over it, we can just choose to act with love or choose to diffuse. So someone says something a little bit brusque to you, maybe they mean it, maybe they don't, maybe they just had a difficult morning with their kids or their spouse, or maybe they're alone. Uh, and so they say something that you don't like, but you don't have to counter that. You might just choose to diffuse and just smile and move on with your day, or you might choose to just act with love. And these are all ways that in the end, we can be happier. Uh, I like to say that when you hold anger against someone, or it's very common maybe to say that you're, t you're taking that poison pill. You're angry. The other person you're angry at isn't benefiting at all. 
nor are you. You're the only one holding that anger. And so a lot of times when we're angry, it might actually be smarter for us to just not be angry and to let that go. So those are some tips on being happier. Uh, I have created a company around mindfulness, which in the end is about helping us lead happier lives. So I'd love to invite you to join us. Uh, the company is called The Path, and we're a community of meditators and people interested in meditation. Uh, we do a bunch of different things, but each week now we get together, I guide a meditation, and then we bring in a speaker. So this week it was about living with flow, and we brought in two experts on flow. Last week we brought someone in who actually was wrongfully shot. He was completely innocent by police. And even so, he chooses to live with positivity. And that was really inspiring. And next week, we are going to invite on a speaker to teach us how to think like a rocket scientist um, from an author, Ozan Veral, who used to work uh, at a place where they literally built rockets um, that would go into space. Uh, so I invite you to join us. Um, that's at thepath.com or thepath.com slash Tuesday. We also do a number of other things. We have a teacher training program in mindfulness. We can be certified to teach uh, mindfulness meditation yourself uh, and just all sorts of activities. We run retreats, virtual and in-person when we're able to do that. All sorts of activities around meditation. Uh, and I think meditation is important, but it's only, it's only one step. And... The other steps, some of which I've outlined here, are choosing to diffuse, choosing joy. And another one is just about living with values. Uh, we, as The Path, are a Buddhist company. We're rooted in Buddhist values. And I'm a big believer that we don't all have to have the same values. But it's really nice to choose values that work for you and then to live by those. In fact, in the Jewish definition of happiness... Many people say, there are rabbis that say that if you set ethics for yourself and then you live by them, at the end of each day, if you can say, every decision that I had control over, I made an ethical decision by, like I lived with my ethics, then in accordance with that, you should feel happy because everything you had control over, you acted ethically, you acted with ethics. And so that's for many people, a Jewish definition of happiness. And I love that because that gives us control over our happiness rather than having it have anything to do with how people act towards us, good luck, bad luck, anything with our day. The fact that we can choose our happiness by choosing wise decisions throughout the day is really empowering. So I hope, I hope some or all of these tips help you to live with more happiness. I'm so honored to be a speaker at this wonderful event celebrating happiness. I wish you a very, very happy rest of your day and evening. And come find me at The Path, or you can find me specifically at sitatthepath.com. Again, my name is Dina Kaplan, and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.